Hello everybody, you join me for the second part in a mini-series of tests on old, modified, classic BMWs. I call it a mini-series, it is really just the two videos unless something comes my way in the next week or so. But we started with the E30 329 that is now behind me. And I'm currently driving this E36 328i. The owner calls it the 328i Sport, which BMW never did, but it has many of the same pieces as the 323 Sport. And as you may have noticed, it's an estate, which means that it's a very, very unusual choice for a track car, which is what this is now primarily used as. Unlike the E30 I've just stepped out of, which has a fully blueprinted engine with some fairly serious modifications, this one doesn't have too much changed up front. The major and sole modification is the fitment of the 325i manifold, a very well known and popular mod that frees up quite a bit of power on these 328 engines. That means the car is probably running in the order of about 220-230 horsepower. All of the other mods are related exclusively to handling. It has Bilstein coilovers, poly bushes, stiffer anti-roll bars, almost a complete rear end from an E36 M3, and a number of other things which I'll list in the description down below. The effect is transformative. This thing is so keen to turn. I mean, this has taken me by surprise at how nippy off-center this car is. Now, of course, there's still quite a lot of car because, mercifully, this owner has not stripped the interior from his car. And I am a great proponent of leaving track car interiors fairly standard. In a vehicle like this, you are never, ever going to be the fastest thing on track. So you may as well get home with your hearing still intact. Simple as that. This actually rides pretty well too. The exhaust, as you might be able to tell, other than the manifold, is standard. And that's important because it means that you can enjoy a decent road without upsetting everyone. And also you can get on even the strictest of track days. However, in the vein of all old school performance BMWs, it still makes a reasonably nice noise courtesy of that fairly throaty six cylinder. It's also got pretty decent torque from low down. Of course, nothing compared to a modern turbocharged lump but it's pretty darn good. What's amazing getting in the E36, and it's been a very, very long time since I've driven one of these, out of the E30 is how much further forward this interior feels. It feels, in essence, no different really to the E46, the car which then lived up until about 2005, and I still consider to be pretty modern. I love the E46 for a great many reasons, and although there's certainly differences between the two, it's the little trip computer down here that really gives the game away. But otherwise, it all feels very, very similar. The E46 is certainly an improvement in interior quality, but it's not the massive leap that you have over the E30. But this is a car that's not really bought for its interior quality. It has been bought for practical considerations. The boot is a decent size, there's plenty of room in the back, and importantly, for track use, there is no sunroof, which I think is a shame, because I do love a good sunroof, but the weather today doesn't look like it's really gonna be sunroof weather. The car does have an upgraded clutch, so your movement needs to be pretty positive. You can't really dawdle with it, otherwise it will punish you, but I don't think it's that bad. I've driven far worse. response is not quite as instant and as savage as that in the E30 and that may just be the simple extra mass that this car carries over that one but it's still a far better steer than you would imagine. The steering actually weights up, something so few modern cars do properly. There's not as much texture as there is in the 30 but I think it's perhaps even more direct. This car feels really really tight. You can heel and toe, again not quite as easy as the 30, but it can be done. Oh, this is great. This kind of car has a certain purpose in life. It is the sort of car that you want to buy knowing that nobody ever it's really gonna give it even a second glance. They're all gonna look at it and think, 
uh, dad's old beamer so the dog car of that it's a bit boring really but you know it's not boring at all you know it is in fact very fun the modest power figure means that even with the rain starting to come down not particularly worried about that rear end it's certainly a stiffer car than you would get standard and I think it feels even stiffer than perhaps the E30 but because it is a car that's set up for track I find that forgivable it isn't actually too severe I've driven cars out of the factory gates which are probably worse than this these long sweepers where this car feels so planted this is good really good it makes me very excited because I have on offer a drive of an almost completely standard 328. It's a saloon or a coupe, can't recall which, and so it's going to be a little different to this. But I'm interested to see whether it can retain some of the amazing characteristics of this. This was a bit of a surprise review for me, actually. I wasn't aware that it was going to turn up. It's a, a bonus, and that's why I've released it on a day where I normally wouldn't have a review. This is a free, this is my gift to all of you. And it is a gift, this car. Now, E36 prices have certainly risen a little bit recently, but nowhere near as dramatically as E30s. It's even geared sensibly, so you can actually enjoy third on the road and keep your driving license intact. How novel. Right, gonna embarrass myself here because you see, I said that the 8 series I drove was the ultimate driving machine, and then I corrected myself and said that the E30 was, and now I need to do that again because this thing, I'm not talking about this thing handles quite nicely for a 20 year old BMW, this thing handles great. End. Full stop period if you're American and that sounds weird to say that so confidence inspiring so well set up so exactly everything people think BMWs are and yet what they often or nearly never actually are there is a limited slip differ at the back but honestly with this amount of power driving moderately on the road it's not really going to come into play if you want to hoon about in it which i'm sure you can it will make a difference it actually all feels pretty solid in here too not as many creaks or rattles as i thought there might be and again nowhere near as many as in the e30 this is the best most anonymous q car it's completely different to that RS6 V10 that I drove recently. That thing was just devastatingly quick, just obscene. This is fast in another way. If you want to have serious fun driving a car that nobody's ever going to guess would be this good, this has got to be one of the best cars I've ever driven. <laughs> oh, what a day. What a day. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and see you all for the next one. Bye-bye.